Um, all right, so this talk is part of a series where I'll be going through several colors in the spectrum and giving you guys a quick overview uh, on what our brains think when we see them. So one small disclaimer on this. Um, these color psychologies represent Western cultural views and may or may not extend to other parts of the world. Uh, colors hold many meanings for many different types of people. Um, and I'm going to sit and kind of read from this. There's a ton of information I want to try to get out to you guys. So I want to make sure I don't miss anything. So I'm sorry I'm not like standing and engaging as much, but um, I think it'll still really help. Uh, so some people, and this is commonly the case with clients, uh, have their own personal associations with colors that we may or may not be able to change. Someone could really just hate purple. And no matter what you do, they are going to hate purple and they will not want their logo to be purple. Um, but enough about purple. Today we are going to talk about red. And uh, red is a polarizing color. It holds a ton of different meanings across a really wide breadth of hues, shades, and tints. And this makes it both very versatile and challenging to work with. Uh, before I continue, uh, just so you guys know what I'm talking about when I say hues, shades, and tints, uh, a hue is a color. Think red, green, or blue. Uh, in the RGB spectrum, that means moving this way. A shade means a darker color, so that means moving this way. Uh, and a tint means a lighter color, moving this way. So you can see on the spectrum there, it moves. hue moves this way, it gets lighter as you move up, and darker as you move down, or around, depending on how this is shaped, but for now, up or down. Um, for the purposes of these talks, we'll all assume that we're working in the RGB color space, um, because print mixing is very different than RGB mixing. I won't get into that um, in this particular talk. Uh, but RGB works uh, by mixing red, green, and blue as the color primaries. The main difference is with RGB you're working with light rather than pigment. So when you mix all of the colors together, you end up with white in the middle, as opposed to when you mix all your paints together or inks together, you get black. Um, but again, that's another talk entirely. Uh, just to orient ourselves within the RGB color universe, red exists within the warm color spectrum, which runs from about here to here. Uh, depending on what context you're in. And red is a primary color. It makes itself known within both yellow and magenta in the RGB spectrum, um, and it sits at one end of the visible spectrum of light, right before the invisible light infrared, which I'm sure you guys have heard of. Um, again, this is another talk entirely. There's a lot of science behind just how we perceive color. Um, maybe I'll do that one in the future. Um, but as light wavelengths get longer and extend outside of our ability to perceive them, they're considered infrared. Um, infrared light is responsible for radiating heat, so some of red's psychological associations are related to the fact that they sit so close to this hot zone within the color spectrum. So now for the good stuff. Common associations with the color red. Uh, you get courage, strength, warmth, energy, survival, stimulation, masculinity, excitement, passion, defiance, aggression, strain, and anxiety. Um, now let's, uh, red is a warm color associated with our most physical needs and our will to survive. Think fire, the sun, blood, heat, and warmth. It exudes a strong and powerful, sometimes masculine energy, uh, and red is energizing. It excites the emotions and motivates us to take action. Think clearance signs or stoplights. Uh, it's a strong-willed color and can give confidence. Think about people who drive red sports cars or wear red lipstick. Uh, it's the color of sexuality and can stimulate deeper, more intimate passions in us. Love and sex on the positive side, or revenge and anger on the negative. Think red roses, the heat of the moment, or a flaring temper. Red can be polarizing. At its most positive, it can create life with its vibrant energy. Or at its most negative, use anger and aggression to fuel war and destruction. These lines are not so easily towed, but subtle adjustments in hue, tint, and shade can make a big difference. In some contexts, some of the things I just mentioned might be communicated by these colors. Others might not. But when viewed in a set of swatches like this, it's difficult to attach emotion to any one color. It's important to note that color is always relative. I'm not going to delve into the particulars of color relativity, but colors can look very different based on the colors that are around them. Now, I understand that some of these hues fall into the classification of pink, but for the purposes of this talk, I'm lumping it all kind of together under red. Um, pink has its own associations, which I won't delve into this time, but some of Red's associations do apply to pink as well. Um, and I don't know where this person got the names for these colors. They're actually, actually really amusing, and I uh, really like this graphic because some of them are... It's funny to think about what happened in someone's brain when they decided to name these. I've never seen a red cashew. Yeah, you never know. <laughs> Maybe this person saw a red cashew once, and that was it. 
Um, so coming back to uh, the color spectrum, if you find yourself in the position of choosing a color and you're giving serious thought to color psychology, remember that we're working within a spectrum. As with any spectrum, color meaning shifts seamlessly as you move around. Uh, most colors retain their face value meanings, but the closer they are to their neighbors, the more the meaning can change. Think about it like horoscopes. Uh, people born closer to the changeover to a new sign are more likely to have characteristics of both signs as well as their core birth sign. So for example, take these three shades of red. Um, hmm, this is interesting. TV is interpreting these different than my screen. Um, I'm going to like maybe turn this around so you guys can see a little bit better the hues that I've got here. So the one in the middle is a pure red, RGB 255. Uh, the one on the left, wait, this one. <laughs> I'm sorry, this one, now it's all backwards. Yes, the one on the left um, leans more towards orange. And the one on the right has a touch more blue in it, so it leans more towards magenta. Um, the orange red feels just as active as the middle red. Think traffic cones or uh, construction signs. Um, and the one on the right is more passive. It's warmer, it's more inviting, it's more human. Um, so you can see how a subtle change in hue can really communicate a color very differently. So a little bit of color in context. Um, I pulled a couple of sites here that I think use red in very um, either classic ways or very interesting ways. So this site is a classic case of bright red used to call out points of attention. Even amongst the other competing colors of the masthead image, the full width red called action at the bottom of the viewport draws our eye. It makes us want to scroll. And if that doesn't get our attention, the bright red logo in the top corner will. Red has its utilitarian uses across the web, at the web as well, as seen in error messages. Red is an excellent choice because it is often associated with warning signs and will almost always get our attention. When using red as an emotional color, the hue is paramount to what you're trying to communicate. On this site for the Croatian Summer Olympics running team, the magenta red gives this page a softer sense of humanity while still holding on to that really exciting feeling. And with this shade of red, you may think of blood or violence, especially because it's backed up on black. Remember, colors are always relative to what's around them. This gives red a gravitas that is sapped of positive physical energy, but it may still compel you, perhaps through anxiety, to explore the red elements all around the page. So now for a few brands. Um, I pulled a couple of examples that I think are really using red. Um, for it, Their background reasoning is actually very, very interesting. So uh, you could write an entire dissertation just on red logos, but I picked these four brands because they're utilizing red uh, for slightly different reasons. Target's red and white logo dates back to 19, 1968, but didn't quite look like this. Uh, the corporation says the color choice was arbitrary, but historically the bullseye of Target's has been red, uh, acting as an archer's ideal goal. This brings to mind a certain energy that excites the shopping experience. Think of it in contrast to Walmart's blue and yellow. You know that Walmart will have the thing that you're looking for at a cheap price, and you can trust that you'll go home with it. Um, but you're probably not that excited to go there and get it. Target's red makes you excited, and they often live up to their expectations. I mean, who doesn't love shopping at Target? Target. <laughs> Target, if you're a white suburban mom. Uh, Coca-Cola's <laughs> Coca logo has been red since 1890, uh, and was chosen when the company began painting its syrup barrels red so that tax agents wouldn't think that it was alcohol, uh, because of the time of, right before Prohibition, alcohol was taxed very heavily. Um, and again, that speaks to red's eye-catching properties. Now, with the Kraft logo, they really do something interesting. With the recent color refresh, they opted for a more magenta red, which isn't quite reading here. I'd invite you guys to take a look at it later. But it's almost pink. Um, and it's, they chose that in contrast to the traditional bright red. And their messaging has very much been about the family and the household. So this could be their attempt at humanizing the, sens the sensationalized nature of the color red. And lastly, KFC, uh, with its Deep South history, opts for a more muted red that could bring about thoughts of an old kitchen tablecloth or a rich red apron uh, that gives you that home-cooked fuzzy feeling when you get your deep fried 10 piece. Um, red is also classically known as an appetite stimulant, which I'm sure you guys have all heard, um, and it works very well for food and restaurant brands. Uh, actually, I was just watching a documentary recently, Cooked, on Netflix, if any of you guys have watched it, um, and they talk about the rise of fast foods. And KFC's original value prop was to be the meal replacement. Its first marketing campaign was to moms as the time saver. You could go out and get an entire meal for your whole family. You didn't have to cook anything at home. Um, so that was pretty interesting. 
Uh, now I'll close with one of my favorite quotes uh, by a professor of mine in school, a sculpture professor. Whenever a kid was struggling with a project, he would tell them this. If you want it to be noticed, make it big. And if that doesn't work, make it red. Thanks. <laughs>